Hey everyone, it's me, Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi out here in Northern California. Welcome to the Triumphant Turtle Zen Tangle class. I'm so excited to bring this to you. So let's go ahead and talk about the things that we're going to need for class today. I'm going to be working with the Micron PN pen. I have a graphite pencil that I'll be using. This is just a regular number two pencil. I'm going to be working with the Sakura Jelly Roll White Pen. I happen to have an 08 here, but if you have a 10, that's fine too. I'm going to be working with Prismacolor pencils. I know, surprise, surprise. Now, if you don't have Prismacolor pencils, just go ahead and grab whatever color pencils you have and play along. Now most of you know that I love to use the Genesis tile from the Tangled Yogi Shop. This is a tile with super smooth paper. It really receives color pencil quite nicely. This tile is four and a half by four and a half inches and I just love, love, love this tile. Now if you don't happen to have the tile today, just go ahead and grab your sketchbook and put a little uh, square in it that's four and a half by four and a half and you're ready to rock and roll. With that said, let's get started with the Triumphant Turtle. So hopefully you have all your materials off to one side. Many of you know that I like to do just a little grounding exercise before we actually start creating. So let's go ahead and take a comfortable seated position, however that works for you today. Let your hands rest in your lap. Let your spine grow comfortably tall. Let your shoulders melt away from your ears here and take a moment to just draw your attention to your breath, feeling your body as you inhale and feeling your body as you exhale. Slow inhalation and slow exhalation. One more time right here and slowly exhaling and just staying with your breath for the next few moments here and as we breathe I'm going to share a quote from a really really neat writer this is Bruce uh, Fessler and he says take a walk with a turtle and behold the world on pause and I just loved that concept of the world being on pause. I feel like when we do Zen Tangle, it's kind of like taking a pause from the outside world too. So I think the turtle could be our mascot for today. And let's take in one more deep breath right here. And slowly exhale. And then wiggling in your fingertips and wiggling in your toes and gently blinking your eyes open if you had them closed. And let's begin. So I have my graphite pencil in my hand and I'm going to start the regular old-fashioned Zen Tangle way by putting my dots in my corners here. And you can see I'm putting them fairly close to my corners. And then I'm going to play connect the dots here and just let my borders kind of fill in can see that I had a little too much of the matcha tea today. My hands are shaking just a little bit, but I can't resist it. It's so yummy. <laughs> I'm just going around and creating that border. Now once I have my border, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to develop my string here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and find the middle point of that upper line. And I'm going to, I think I need to come over a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to divide the space in half. You can see it's not perfect, but it'll do. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn it again and I'm going to try to find the middle there so that I end up with four squares. Go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back we're going to work on that string just a little bit more. So for this string what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to divide this first box in half 
and then I'm going to divide it again into four squares. So you can see that's fairly easy, right? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to let this line continue all the way down into this next box and then I'll go ahead and cut that in half as well and I'm going to let that line continue into the next box just like so and I'm going to divide this one in half. Now once I have that I'm going to let that line continue up and I'll let this line continue out. So now we've got this really nice grid in the middle of the piece here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some dots in these the center uh, area in here. You can see that I've got four squares in there and this is going to be where we're going to focus on that really beautiful star tangle but I'm just darkening my lines just a little bit so that it's easy for me to recognize where I'm going to be working. I'm still continuing to use my graphite pencil just to give myself a little bit of ease here. And then finally what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to do a very narrow aura inside of this piece just to help it get some definition. So I'm just going to come in, wiggle wiggle, wobble wobble. <laughs> I'm turning the tile so that now I've got that center piece. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to do mine and then when we come back we're going to start to introduce some tangling into the piece. Let's begin to take a look at some tangling pieces here. I want to talk about our first tangle and it comes to us from a tangler called Brain Massage. I'm sorry I don't know her her real name. I looked for it but I couldn't find it. But she did a really beautiful fragment that I saw a little while back and I really wanted to share it with you. And it makes this just gorgeous border. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a fragment and the fragment is just a pattern border boiled down to its bare minimum here. And so you can see I've got a square and I'm just going to create the letter A inside. And then once I have that I'm going to do just a couple of lines underneath and then I'm going to do some aura lines on the outside and this creates a really gorgeous tangle. So let's go ahead and start to add it into our piece. One of the reasons why I loved this fragment so much is because the shading of it really brings it to life. So let's bring it into our piece here. Now if you're the type of person that has a tendency to just get completely lost in what you're doing, you can see that I've picked up my graphite pencil just for a minute here. And what you can do is you can just very lightly in the outside corners, just put a little X there. We are not going to be tangling in those corners. And then later on you can come back and erase and let that area be a place that you can work in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come into this space right here and I'm going to start with that letter A. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and create the letter A. Now I know you're probably asking why aren't you inking in your string and part of it is that I'm going to be using that string as a guide but I'm also going to be using it as part of the tangle too. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to create the letter A and for me what I like to do is I'll come in and I'll divide it in half and then I can come in and divide it again and I find that that makes a really pretty tangle here. I'm going to go ahead and do this again just by creating the letter A and letting it touch at the bottom with the first one. And then I'm looking at my lines here and I'm just going to carry them into the next A. 
so that they are lining up. And you can see that that develops a really beautiful way of doing the tangle. Now, on these outside pieces here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create those aura lines. And then I'll go over here and I'll do the same thing. And you can see that I'm working with about four lines here. You can see that that's got a really nice feel to it. In the center, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to come in and make another tangle in here. So it's going to look like this. It'll go one, two, three, and then I'll come over to the other side and do the same. But watch, they're going to connect. get that one to connect in there. And then if you want to add one more in there, you can. Now, one of my favorite tangles is the tangle zonked, and I'm going to write this in here. And zonked is where you have a V, and it has a little bit of weight at the bottom of it. So, to create the center, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and put a little weight into these tips. It's one of my favorite tangles. I come back to it over and over again. However, up at the top here, I'm going to pull in that last triangle. And it will really play nicely with the center when we get the center in. So that's what I'm going to do with these. So you can see now I can come in and start to add my border. Just like so. And it creates this really beautiful pattern, don't you think? So let's go ahead and do it again. Let's turn our tile clockwise here. We're going to come in right in here, and we're going to start in with the letter A. You can see that I'm having it connect with my corners. And I'll come in and make the letter A. Divide the space in half, and then do one on the top and one on the bottom. That just gives it a really nice symmetry, I think. And then I'll come in and I'll do it again. Taking my time. Now I can use that last one to bring these across as a guide. Or you can use the same trick that I did before where you divide just like so. I'm going to do the outside pieces first. And I'm always doing it with four. And then I'll come into the center and I'll do the same thing. I'll come over to the other side. It's a little wonky, but I'm doing my best. And then if you want to, you can uh, put in more or less. And I'm going to go ahead and give these a little bit of weight here. And then I'll pull in my triangle at the top. Remember, when you're pooling your ink, go very, very light on that pen. The lighter you go, the more the ink flows. You got it. I'll go ahead and I'll put in my border. And I'll come up top too. 
and you can already see that this is starting to develop, to develop a really nice feel to it. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to do mine and then when we come back we're going to start to work with the centerpiece. So I'm going to go and finish up these two right over here, just turning my tile clockwise. Have fun with this. Our next tangle comes to us from Sharon Wong and it's actually an original Zen tangle tangle by headquarters but she has a really beautiful version of it that I wanted to share with you and this is a version of way bop as a flower so what she did was I've got a little square here and I want you to imagine that this is one of our squares she's got this circle that just kind of intersects through that square here with an aura and then she did a very very light string that goes diagonally through the piece. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make two little petal like shapes not unlike what we do with poke leaf. They kind of look like bunny ears don't they? I'm going to connect to those leaves here and then I'm going to come out and up and create a larger petal that connects the two. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to create a little bit of a V that auras those two petals that are in the middle. And then finally I'm going to do an aura on the outside that connects it all together. She does some really nice detailing in this piece right in here where she comes in and does another half moon and then she comes in and does a little bit of what looks like henna drum. And then she pulls her ink into the piece. And I just thought this is such a beautiful tangle that I really wanted to share it with you. So let's go ahead and work with this in our composition. I have my pencil in my hand here and I'm just going to come into the center and I'm going to make a little circle and then I'm going to do an aura around my circle. Once I have that, let's go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit more. Here's my square that I'm going to work in. I'm going to, and you can see that I'm working with my graphite pencil as I do this. I'm just giving this a little bit of a line so that I know where to put my little petals. So I'm going to do one petal right here and I'm going to do one petal right here. And you'll notice my petals aren't touching. Okay, I'm going to come in and swing off of that and come up towards the middle of this piece and drop down and touch the side of that petal again. I'm going to come right above it and I'm going to do a little aura and I'm going to let it connect. I'll go to the inside and do that little V that we did before just like so. Now I'm going to do this all the way around in each one of these areas. If you want to do yours in ink, you can do yours in ink or you can do yours in pencil. It's really up to you. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to go ahead and come in and ink in what I just did. And then I'll go ahead and I'll do my aura and the other aura right here, letting it connect and coming down and connecting just like so. So I'm going to go around to each of these and do the same thing but what I am going to do in my graphite pencil is I am going to give myself those little strings to follow so that I can build out my piece here. Okay, so you go ahead and do yours. I'm going to do mine and then when we come back we're going to add some more detailing in. Just a thought as I was about to start tangling the piece is what I did is I added in that little string but I also add a little dot and that's where my first petal is going to go to. That way it gives me a little bit of symmetry as I make my petals all the way around. I hope that's helpful to you. So what I mean by that is I can come in creating my petals and then coming up 
and getting very close to that dot and then going ahead and doing another aura just like so and then that way I have a pretty good chance for some symmetry here okay so go ahead and do yours I'm gonna finish up mine I've got my flower all set up in the center here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to create the outer part of the flower here so I'm gonna come in and you can see that I have my pencil in my hand here to just help me with the symmetry of it and you can see that I'm out here at this point all I'm gonna do is I'm going to follow along the outside edge and I'm gonna create this little V like shape that's gonna help me to aura as I move my way around. So you can see that it's following the outside edge and then I'm just bringing a little V-like shape around the edge of my flower here. Just kind of following the edge, dropping in, creating that V-like shape and dropping out. And then I'll come in one more time and do the same thing. Just a little V-shape and dropping out again and you can see that that creates a really nice feel for the piece and then if I want to I can come in and do an aura with this or not do an aura with it I am thinking that I want to do an aura with it just because it's going to give it a little bit of definition and as I work my way around you'll really start to see that definition kind of flow off of the piece. Just working my way around. So when I did my, my training with Zentangle, they would often say, when in doubt, aura out. And auraing has never really um, let me down. It's always given my pieces a little bit more interest to it. An aura is just what you think it is. It's just that echo line. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and ink this in. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to go to the outside first and do those outside lines. And then I'll come to the inside and do the aura just like so okay and so you can see where I'm going with this really starts to give it that beautiful flow go ahead and do yours I'm gonna finish mine I'm gonna go ahead and close off the outer edges of my piece here so you can see that I'm just coming in and closing off the outer edge of each of those little V sections that we had there. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to come in and pull my ink into those areas. So you can see that I'm just taking that pen and very, very gently now pulling in the ink. and giving this a really nice softness. I'm going to turn the piece and just bring it into those areas. So you go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back we're going to add a little bit of definition inside of those petals. Take your time with your pooling of the ink. When we really rush through that it shows up and we get this kind of scratchy background to it. So we really want to take our time with the pooling of the ink. Okay? Have fun.
Let's work with the center of this flower here. You're going to see me just go ahead and add in a little bit of that inking in of the center. And then I'm going to come out to where the petal is right in here and I'm going to do a little arc and then an aura behind it. And then I'm going to pull in that first arc here. And once I have that, I'm going to create a petal that's going to come up, touch, and come down, just like so. And then I'll create these little arcs going off the side. And then I'll pull in these little funky triangles that I've got in here. You can see that when I do that, it really makes the whole thing pop. Super fun and super interesting. So I'm going to go to the next one and I'm going to do the same thing. All it is is an arc with an aura behind it, a petal that comes up and over and down, and then I'll jump off the side and I'll do it again, and over on the side and do it again. You can see there's those funky triangles again. I'm going to get those pulled in. And look at how neat that looks. I'm going to come in and pull in the center. Just love the way that that looks. It really gives it um, a very graphic kind of feel. So you go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. And then when we come back, we're going to start to introduce our guests of honor here, the turtles in the corners. All right, I'll see you in a minute. By now, many of you know that I love a good quote, and I found this really great quote by Bill Copeland, and he says, try to be like the turtle at ease in your own shell, and I feel like Zentangle really helps me to be at ease in my own shell. So let's go ahead and pay homage to the turtle today. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by doing a soft little circle. And then I'm going to go ahead and just aura that circle. Once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a triangle up on the top of his head here. And then I'm going to use the Tangle Flux. So Flux, for those of you who are new to Zentangle, it's just a teardrop shape with a line and a dot usually. Okay. Now the way that I'm going to do flux today is I'm going to let it connect to the side of my turtle and come in and then another one and come in and you can put your little line in there with your dot and then I'll do another set right underneath for his back legs and a dot and a dot. Now if you want to give him his little tail in the back, all you have to do is just give him a little triangle for his little tail in the back. Okay? Now for the interior of my uh, my turtle here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a very soft pronton or almost like a hook and then I'm going to let it come out and touch the edge here. And that's going to give us a really neat feeling on the inside. It almost looks like the letter G. So if you come down over and in, or like almost like a half of a six, and then come back out, you'll get that really nice feeling. It almost has a Hawaiian uh, feel to it. And that was definitely an influence for me here. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring this into our composition. I'm going to focus up in this little corner right here and you're going to see me go ahead and just add a little diagonal line that's going to be working its way towards the center. I'm going to come in and I'm going to create a nice circle inside of that piece and you can see that I'm working with my pencil here and I'm going to go ahead and do an aura around that. Now what I'm going to have you do is just that in each of these corners and we want them all to be about the same size. So you're going to see me just go ahead and do this again. Nice circle here.
and mine will be a little bit off because <laughs> that's just how it works out. And then I'll go ahead and I'll do the other two. You go ahead and do yours. So you can see I've had a chance to go all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick up my pen here and I'm going to focus in on this corner. I'm going to go ahead and ink in my circle here. And then I'll go around and I'll do the little aura line. And now I'm going to create my little head for the turtle here. And then I'll come in and I'll create those flux arms that come off of the side of the turtle. I'll come in again right underneath where those flux arms are and do another set. And I'm going to leave the tail off, but you can put your tail in if you need it. And then I'm going to come in and create that little hook-like shape. And I'm just going to attach on the outside just like so. So you can see there's that number six or the letter G, however you see it. Let's go ahead and do it again on the other side. Going around, nice soft little circle here, bringing in his little head, starting at the point of the triangle here, creating that little flux-like shape, and then coming down, and once again, coming down and then going into the center and creating that really cool hook. Okay, now remember if you want to go in and add your line with a dot, you can add your lines with the dot in these, just like so. And another thing that I did that I really liked inside of the hook was I added little dots that followed that little hook line just to make it a little bit interesting. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back we're going to add one little bit of detailing to our turtles. So our turtles are in, which looks really great. I'm loving the way these are all floating into the piece here. It has a very Polynesian kind of feel to it, don't you think? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to ink in the border here. So I always like to leave the border slightly fluid so that I can um, work with the turtles. If the turtles wanted to break the border, they could. I'm just coming in and closing that off. And you can see that it really brings a lot of fun into the piece here. So you go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. So before we move on to color, I want to come back to our piece in the center here, the Waybop. And I want to do just a little bit of an interesting add of detail into Waybop here. So I'm going to be working right at this point right here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and do a very soft curve and a very soft curve, creating a little point that's coming out. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just a soft curved line coming out. One more here. And one more here. Now once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink those in just like so. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back, we're going to add in one more thing. Once I've had the opportunity to get those in there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the top here and I'm going to start to make a flux-like shape that's going to come up, touch, and then come back and down. 
Now once I've got that the way I want it, I'm actually going to make some arcs that are going to come down and they're going to meet that point. I'm going to do four of them and hopefully they're going to match up with the with the points that we have here. So I'm just going to go one, two, three, and the fourth will come and line up. Now I have these really neat kind of interstices here and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull those in. Now you can do this with pencil and get it the way that you want it or you can just kind of gamble like I'm doing and just kind of go for it. <laughs> I just like to let it flow so here I go on the other side. So I'm going to go one, two, three, Oh, well, this one will be a little bit bigger, but there's four. And then I'll go ahead and I'll put in my little interstice pooling in here. And you can see that that brings a really neat feeling to the piece. Let's go ahead and do it right over here. So I'm going to go ahead and create that flex-like shape that's going to come up towards the top and touch. And then I'm going to go right down the side here. One, two, three, and here comes number four. I'll pull my ink just like so. And then I'll do the other side. One, two, three, and here comes four. Pulling my ink just like so super fun and fun and playful and so you can see that it's already starting to look really neat. Now what I want to say about this is you can get in your head about these little circles but when we start to add color to them you won't even notice if yours are not symmetrical or not. So not to worry. Have fun with this, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and finish up mine. You go ahead and finish up yours. It's such a beautiful tangle. I hope you're enjoying it. So I'm enjoying it. <laughs> so we're going to start to bring in some color into the piece here. I have PC992. This is the light aqua. And then I also have in my hand Peacock Blue, which is PC1027. Now remember, if you don't have the same colors as me, you would just want to try to get close to the same hue. So what I have is a light blue and a dark blue. So grab what you've got and don't worry about it. So I'm going to start with the darker blue first because we're going to do a little bit of a wallpapered gem here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come into the center of my triangle here and I'm going to make a little bit of a smaller triangle right in the center. And then I'm going to go ahead and attach to the corners here. Now once I've got that, I'm going to pick up the light aqua and I'm going to come into the corners and just start to add a little bit of that light aqua in there. Do the same thing on the other side. And once I've got that, you can see that I'm leaving a little white in the center of it just to give it a little bit of sheen. And then I'll pick up the darker color and I'm just going to dip into the corners here and give this a little bit of pressure. Coming over to the other side. And then once I have that, I'm going to pick back up that original blue, that's the light aqua again, and I'm going to just blur out my edges a little bit. What I love about these colors in the Prisma set is that they play so well together. They're just a beautiful blending pair. 
and you can see that it starts to give it a real kind of gemstone feeling. Now the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of my white which is PC938 uh, here and I'm just going to blur my edges a little bit. You want to make sure that there's no other color on the white so that it really gives it that softness. just like that. Now I'll come into the center just with a little bit of that light aqua right at the bottom and I'll leave a little bit of white up at the top and that just gives it a really soft gemstone feel. So I'm going to go around to all of my triangles and do just that and you're going to really see this piece start to pop. Alright, have fun with yours, enjoy what you're doing and enjoy the color. One of my favorite things to do is to watch a piece come to life and just by adding in that little bit of color, look at how beautiful that is. It's so fun. So let's start to carry the color. That means we're taking the color from one space and bringing it into another and that really helps the piece have a little bit of congruency or gravity. So I'm going to actually just dive right into the center piece here and I'm going to start by taking that lighter blue first and I'm just going to dust through each one of these little circular shapes with a little bit of the light aqua here and you can see that I'm leaving a little bit of white on the outside edges here. Now once I have that I'm going to pick up a little bit of that darker blue and I'm going to start to add a little bit of that darker blue in here. Now you'll notice that I'm not pushing hard on this color. It's really, really saturated. So whenever you're doing color, always start light first. Okay? And you can see that that's already starting to develop a glow. So I'm going to go all the way around and do just that in each of those petals. You go ahead and do yours. Remember how I said that when we bring in a little bit of color, it'll start to equalize everything? Look at how that center kind of evened out here. You know, I have some that are more than four on the sides and you wouldn't even notice it just because we've added a little color in there. I've got my white pencil in my hand here and I'm just going to blur out my edges just a little bit just to give it a little bit of softening and you can see that I'm just rolling into each of those little circles and doing a little softening on the edge with that white. So if you want to do that go ahead and just grab your white pencil and go for it. So I'm going to start to carry that color again in towards the center and I'm going to bring it right into these little petals that we've got around the center. I'm just going to divide this in half with a little bit of the light aqua and then I'm just going to add a little dusting of the light aqua on one side. So I'm just dividing and then leaving the light aqua on the left hand side. I'm going to turn my piece and just keep rolling with it. So go ahead and play with that and then when we come back we're going to add just a hair of a shadow on those little petals. So I have my darker blue in my hand here. I'm just going to take that color and bring it to the outside edge of that light aqua and you can see that that brings in a little bit of depth onto the piece here. So I'm just going through and adding a little bit of that darker color in here. This is that peacock blue, sorry about that. And just defining the outside edge and you can see that by doing that it really brings a lot of drama into that center and look at how that pops. Really, really love the way that that looks. And if you want to, you can come in with your white pencil and just kind of blur it out a little bit just to give it a little bit of softness and just play. Have some fun with it. I love the white pencil because it brings so much character into the color. Alright, so go ahead and play and then when we come back we're going to bring that light blue in around our turtles next. 
So I'm focusing in on the corner where the turtles are here and I'm going to pick up that light aqua and I'm just going to dust it around. And when I say dust, I mean really going nice and light around that turtle here. And just turning the tile to make it work for your hands here. You can see that I'm just moving it around. And once I've got that light aqua all the way around the turtles here, I'm just going to come up into the corners and do a soft dusting of that darker blue just to give it a little bit of interest. And you can see that that frames the turtle in a really nice way. I can come in, let's zoom in on that a little bit more, and then come back in with a little bit of that light aqua again and you can see that all I'm doing is light little circles right on the line of demarcation where that blue is meeting the darker blue, right? So just getting in there and giving that a little bit of drama. So I'm going to do that in all four cor corners of the piece. Isn't that so fun? I'm really loving it, so I hope you are too. So let's talk about the next colors that we're going to be using for the piece. You know, when I was creating this piece, I was really thinking of Polynesian culture, Hawaiian culture, and I wanted it to have a very earthy kind of feel to it. So we're going to bring some browns into the piece here. I have Sienna Brown, which is PC945. I have the Tuscan Red, which is PC937, and then I also have the Sunburst Yellow, which is PC917. I love these colors. They work really well together, and I'm just going to show you really quickly how to use them. Now remember, if you don't have the same colors as me, you can always use ones that are similar. So this is kind of a reddish brown. This has kind of got an uh, kind of a yellowy a orange kind of feel to it and then of course a warm brown in here as well so you know use colors that you think are going to work for you don't worry about it if you don't have the same so let's go ahead and focus in on our border here. And I'm going to start by bringing in that sienna brown, which is the lighter of the two browns. And I'm going to just lightly dust a little bit of that brown on either side of this little channel that I have here. You'll notice that I'm going to leave a little bit of a frame around the inside piece. So I'm just going to come in and do a little dusting. Now once I've got that, I'm also going to come up into these pieces right here and you're going to see me dust down a little bit from the top and come up a little bit from the bottom giving this a little bit of a sheen in the center as well. I'll go over to the other side and do the same. Now if you don't have another brown in your set, you can always just really press a little bit harder with what, um, what you have right now in your hand. You can see I'm going fairly lightly with it. I am going to switch over to the Tuscan Red, uh, which is a little bit of a darker brown here. And you can see that I'm just going to bring a little shadow down on either side of this piece right in here. Same thing over here. You can already see that it's starting to develop a really, really cool feel on that tangle. I'm going to come over here and start to dust a little bit in this corner with that Tuscan Red. Same thing coming up from the point here. 
and same thing over here. And I'm not pressing hard, I'm just lightly bringing this in. Once I have that, I'm going to come back in with a little bit of that brown and just soften the edges of where that Tuscan red is meeting the Sienna brown. You can see that I'm doing little circles right over the edge just to break up that line of demarcation here. Now once I've got that the way that I want it, this is my favorite part of the whole thing. I'm going to come in with a little bit of that yellow and I'm going to just dust a little bit on the edge in here. And you can see that I'm kind of flowing back and forth into the sienna. And I love the feeling that this gives it. It gives it kind of a nice earthy feel. So I'm going to come over to the other side and do the same. really starts to give that a nice feeling. Same thing in here. And same thing over here. Just love the sheen that that gives it. And if it feels a little too bright for you, you can always take some of that sienna and just let it dance over the top of that yellow just to tone it down a little bit if you don't like it so vivid. So you can play and go back and forth with it. So I'm going to go all the way around and do that technique around all of the pieces. And then when we come back, we'll focus in on the centerpiece. Let's focus in on the center piece right here. I'm going to use the lightest color first. This is the light sienna color and I'm going to just start to dust it down on both sides of that center piece where we have zonked. And I'm just bringing it down and I'm going to leave the point light. Once I've got that in there, I'm going to pick up some of that darker brown. This is the Tuscan Red. Now remember, if you don't have another brown, just press a little bit harder with what you're working with. I'm just giving that a little bit of a shadow as it comes down. I'm going to pick up some of that Sienna again. See my line of demarcation there? I'm going to blur it out with that lighter color. This is the original brown that I started with. And if you're working, you know, with the, um, the same color, you can just go over it lightly or you can pick up a little bit of your white and kind of blur it out too. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of that yellow and I'm going to start to bring a little bit of that yellow into the point. And you can see that I'm kind of jumping back into some of the sienna too, just to give that a little bit of interest. And you'll see that that really brings a nice feeling into the piece. Isn't that fun? So I'm going to go around and finish up mine. You go ahead and finish up yours. So we're going to continue to carry this color forward here. I'm going to pick up that yellow color that I have and we're going to zoom into the center of our piece here. I'm going to come into where we have this little flower and I'm just going to dust a little bit of yellow into that. And then I'll pick up a little bit of that sienna and give it a little bit of a shadow right at the bottom. And then I'll go ahead and I'll come back in and blur out my edges with some of that yellow again, just giving it a little bit of softness. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the center here. I'm going to start with the yellow first just to give this a little bit of interest. And you'll notice that I'm leaving a little bit of a light source right here, not doing any color in there. Now, if you need to sharpen up, you can always sharpen up your pencil just to get a little bit more of a point on it. And then you can come in with that sienna color. This is the lighter of the two browns. And to me, this ends up looking like pretty amber in the center. So you can see I'm just giving that a little dust through, leaving some of that yellow in there. And then if you need to sharpen up again like I do, 
I'm going to bring in some of that Tuscan Red and just give it a little bit of a push on the side here. Now I'm going to come back in with a little bit of that yellow and very, very lightly I'm going to do little circles, just blurring this out, giving it a real softness that gives it that cool gemstone feeling. And I just love the way that looks next to the blue. It's got a real elegance to it. And if you wanted to, you could even take some of that Tuscan Red and kind of let it jump into where that flower is, just giving it a little bit of intensity too. So I'm going to go all the way around and finish those up. I'm going to let go of that yellow that I had just for a moment and I'm going to start to focus in on our turtles in the corners here. And I've got in my hand the uh, Lime Peel Green, which is PC1005. I love this green because it's got a real earthy feel to it. So I'm going to start by zooming in on that little turtle there. And we're going to start with the Lime Peel Green first, and then we're going to start to bring in some browns. So I'm going to do a little bit of that Lime Peel Green in the hook that's on his back. And then I'm also going to bring in a little bit of that lime peel green into his arms and his legs. And I'll dust just a little bit into where his head is. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of that lighter brown here and I'm going to start to dust into the top part of his arms going really really lightly with this and it blends right over that green in such a nice way. These two colors play really really well together and I know you wouldn't think oh I'm going to put green and brown together but they actually look really nice together. You can see that I'm coming up into where his head is and just doing a little shadow up at the top. Now once I've got that the way that I want it, I am going to bring in a little bit more intensity with that darker brown right up at the top. And then I'll pick up a little bit of that green and I'll blur out the edges of where the brown is meeting the green. really really pretty. So go ahead and do just that and then when we come back we're going to start to work on the inside just a little bit more. So I'm going to take a little bit of that lighter brown in here and just dust it in right next to the green just to give this a little bit of contrast and almost like a yin and a yang in here. I'll take a little bit of that darker brown and bring a little bit of a shadow into the piece. Just getting it right in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm also going to pick up a little bit of graphite. And my graphite is going to bring a little bit of a shadow on the outside edge of the hook of the turtle here. And you can see I'm going fairly lightly. And graphite's just a pencil, number two, pencil. You can see that I'm going fairly lightly with it. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of white and use my white as a blender, but I'm also using it as a little bit of a setting tool. So you can see that all I'm doing is little circles and that's kind of dragging forward that graphite over the green, which I think looks really, really cool. and just gives that a little bit of edginess, which I think is fun. Now, I am going to pick up a little bit of that yellow that we were working with before, and I'm going to use that right in the brown just to blend everything in.
So you can see that I'm kind of dragging it around and getting a really nice blend in that centerpiece. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. And then when we come back, we're going to do some finishing touches on the piece. The final component that I'm going to do on the turtle is I'm going to add some little lines into where the little ring is around him. And you can see that I'm going fairly slow with this. You know, our lines have a tendency to give us away if we're rushing through a piece here. And so all I'm doing is just going nice and slow and creating a little bit of texture around what we've just done. And I really love the way that that looks. So I'm going to go around and do my turtles just like that. This is starting to glow, isn't it? Love that. So I'm going to bring in a little bit of my jelly roll. I have a jelly roll number eight in my hand here. And I'm going to focus in on the center of the piece and just add a little bit of sheen in the center. I'm going to drop down and you can see that my pen is fighting me there a little bit. I'm going to drop down and create a little bit of an arc. And then I'm going to give this a little bit of a dot just to give it a little bit of interest in the center. You can also come in where your uh, little arcs are in here and if they need a little bit of cleanup, you can clean them up with a little bit of the white, which I really love. And if you wanted to give them a little sheen, you could put a little dot on one side just to give them a little sheen too. Now I am going to go into my corners here and add a little bit of white dots into my corners. You're going to see me turn and just give that a little bit of interest. And you know, you may have to go over this a couple of times just to get them to really pop. I'm going to have to wait for mine to dry just a little bit, but I will go in and get them to be a little bit stronger in there. Really, really pretty. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is if you feel like you want to add a little bit of green into the center, you know, I know that we've got our green on the outside edges, but if you wanted to add just a touch of that green, what I've got in my hand is that lime peel green, and you can see that when I just slightly roll it over the top, look at how it starts to glow. Notice the difference between here and here. So I'm going to go through and just add just a little blush of that green right on the outside edge in here just to make it interesting. And look at how that has a really nice correlation with the outside edge. So if you want to play, go ahead and play. So I've gone ahead and put my initial down here in the corner. It's my chop. And your chop is just your initial or the way that you identify as a symbol um, in your piece. And it is the time where you kind of look back over your piece and you offer a little bit of gratitude for what you've created today. This is really you time, the time that you take away from the rest of the world and do something that feeds your spirit. And I hope that this did for you today. So if you enjoyed the class, please leave a comment below. I always love to hear from you guys. and hear what you think about the classes. Even better, hit the subscribe button and then that way you'll be notified every time I add a class to the channel. And even best, tell a friend about what you're doing over here and help them to, to start in with a little bit of Zentangle and color together. If you haven't had a chance to join us on Facebook, we have a really great community page there. It's the Tangled Yogi Art Community page, and all of my students post their work there from class. So if you want to join us and meet a bunch of really fun, super supportive students, that's the spot to go to. All right, that's it for me. I'm Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi, and I look forward to tangling with you soon. Bye for now.